welcome along to Snetterton for No Limits Racing 2022. This is round two of the season after the opening rounds back in March at Silverstone. But we're here this weekend for a, a nice a plethora of races to look forward to. And I think we are good to go pretty much for the first race of the day. The green flag is very shortly to be uh, raised from the back of the grid, which it now is. So all the riders can look towards the front. They'll look towards the gantry, which very shortly will uh, go red. As soon as it goes down, we'll be racing here at Snetterton on day two. The red lights go out now, and it's a good start this time from Tommy Downs. Matt Lake didn't get a bad start, but not initially as quick as those around him. But uh, straight away, straight line speed for Matt Lake gets him into the uh, first corner in first place. So he leads the back through. Second place for number 17, uh, Tommy Downs. Worked the way from Richie's up towards the Wilson hairpin for the first time of asking. Yesterday we had a couple of incidents up there, but all in all, we got through most of the day without too many problems, and hopefully today will be exactly the same as they turn the way now from Wilson down the short straight in towards the left-hander at Palmer, which is pretty much the only part of the circuit we can't see on cameras or from view, so they come from there down towards Agostini, and let's see if Matt Lake has continued to hold the lead, because he got that uh, good start, led them through Richie's corner, and it looks like he's uh, still up there, just ahead of Tommy Downs, and in fact those two have now just broke away slightly from the rest of the pack, and have got a lot of uh, attention from behind to deal with, so it's going to be a bit of a a hard lap to keep them all at bay but on their way now they go down on towards the Bentley straight for the first time. Matt Late is the uh, man up towards the front of the field. Very closely hounded at the minute by Tommy Downs of bike number 17. As they come back towards us there is nothing still to choose between them. Tommy Downs had got the lead but he makes a mistake at the final corner so Matt Late leads Tommy Downs. Third place is Russell Brook. Fourth place is the number 125 machine of Andrew Hurd. So a few movers inside the top 10 as we now head into the second part of this race. Matt Late is still your leader. Matt Late now has really stretched his legs over Tommy Downs because 1.6 seconds becomes 4.1. So I think if Tommy Downs is to get the job done and win a race, he needs to be kind of having more of a, an effect in the early part and trying to hold off Matt Lake, but it hasn't quite worked on this occasion, unfortunately. On to his last lap now has gone Matt Lake with a 6.6 second lead over Tommy Downs. now is in the final sector on his final lap looking for his uh, fifth victory of the year out of the six races we've had so far the only one he hasn't won was race number three at Silverstone but he's back on top spot and he's going to take the win in the Super Twins as he works his way up towards the checker flag which is in hand and Matt Late is going to be the winner once again in the Super Twins he comes up towards the line and Matt Late has done the job to take the checker flag here at Snetterton uh, second place will go the way of Tommy Downs so for Tommy, that is his second podium. Matt Late, your winner by 7.2 seconds. His uh, sixth victory of the, sorry, fifth victory of the year after the three at Silverstone. Uh, Tommy Downs for second, third place for Russell Brook, fourth place for Andrew Hurd, and fifth place for 83, Jonathan Wells. And that is those four classes done for this weekend. We will see them back at Donington Park, as we said, on the 7th and 8th of May. Uh, next for us, though, we'll be turning our attention back to one of the quickest of the classes this weekend. The Pirelli Super Series 1000s, supported by Premier 1000s, have their final race of the weekend. Very important just to run you through how the championship looks, because it was, as I said, a very hotly anticipated uh, season to look forward to. It's kicked off at Silverstone, and once again, they didn't disappoint. Last few bikes now into position, some of those being in the midfield. Jake Major Burl, I can see, just pulling up uh, on the 155 machine on row number five. And the last few just settling into position towards the back, which they now have done. So we get the green flag uh, from the rear of the field, and we are set to go for 10 laps of racing for the Pirelli Super Series and the Premier 1000s. Red lights go out now, and a great start from Craig Neal, a terrible start from Joe Talbot. He doesn't get away at all there, but he's uh, mingled down into about... 
fourth or fifth position. He might be able to recover some of those on the run towards the first corner, which he does into third place, but that was a bit of a tardy start, unfortunately, for Joe Talbot. Just didn't quite catch the lights there, so he drops down the field, but straight away tries to challenge for second place on what's going to be Paul Jordan, by the looks of it, on bike number 19. So he gets back up into second place. Uh, so already he's making hay while the sun shines here at Sneston, which is good to see. So he did the job this morning in qualifying, as we said, by one and a half seconds. That's how quick he was in this morning's qualifying session. But now he needs to transform that qualifying pace into race pace, which he is gradually starting to do. But uh, Craig Need still leads on the run now down through the right-hander at Williams. And I think, by the looks of it, on this occasion, everyone has safely made it through because there's no bikes left on the tarmac. Wilson, there's no yellow flags I can see around the rest of the circuit, so we're quite in a position to make a move in towards Murray's there, so it's first and second together. Just off the tail of them is Paul Jordan on the 22 machine, and then let's wait to see who comes through in fourth position. Now a couple of seconds adrift by the looks of it, but through they go. It is going to be Craig Neve who's credited with the lead of the first lap. Joe Talbot second on number 19, who's up there in third place on bike number nine. So Callum's had a, a good start from the second row of the grid. And the one who's actually lost down is going to be Paul Jordan because he comes through in somewhat uh, a lonely eighth place there. So he has had uh, a bad start as well. But uh, here comes Joe Talbot then for the lead of the race. This is absolutely fantastic racing uh, from the top two. They're going to give no quarter at all to each other. And we're going to go for an all-out battle in this final race of the weekend. He's on a charge now, is Joe Talbot. And he's tucked up nicely now behind Joe Talbot as they head down the Bentley straight. He's in that toe, head tucked down as much as possible. Leads us through once more. There's another quickest lap of the race there from Joe Talbot. Craig Neve did try to respond. He did his best lap of the race there, 152.961. Uh, but straight behind him, Joe Talbot did a best lap of the race with a 152.803. So he is absolutely flying now. The BMW has been very, very quick in a straight line. And he comes back, he comes back, he comes back. But he's not quite there, is uh, Craig Neve. So he's not going to get past Joe Talbot. Fight back on the run down towards Murray's. I think he has a brief look, doesn't he? But again, not quite close enough to, to dive. And Craig, a very experienced racer, not going to try anything too silly there. But if he gets a good run across the line, he might have a, a chance of challenging back. Just keeping an arm off for the lead. Well, they're that quick. They're already down towards the bomb hole. So through they go there for the final time. And I don't think they're going to encounter any more traffic in this race. So it's going to be now for Joe Talbot. It'll be a first podium and also a first win if he can hold on to it. Drag to the line, check a flag at the ready. And Joe Talbot will come away with the first win of the weekend in the Pirelli Super Series 1000s and the Premier 1000s just ahead of Craig Lee by, get this, just under three tenths of a second. A really, really close race thoroughly enjoyable to watch as well so well done to Joe Talbot and Craig Neve 28 finishes in the Pirelli Super Series 1000s supported by the Premier 1000s I hope you enjoyed that because they were some really really exciting races this weekend and uh, can't wait to see what they deliver at Donington Park in the early stages of May uh, we have four races still to come next to those is going to be for the Metzler Newcomer 600s pre-injection and the Moto 46 Street Bike Cup so very shortly we'll have this race to get underway just looking at the screens the last few bikes are just coming through uh, Brundle and Nelson so a yellow flag turned into a green flag and then that means we'll all look towards the, the gantry for this race to uh, eventually get underway which we now do Paul Holden brings down the visor on his helmet he looks towards the gantry which goes red and this six lap race gets underway now with a good start being made by Paul but then he gets a bit of a wheelie there so he drops down to uh, second place so that means Jonathan Hedges will come through uh, into the lead but can he hold it up towards the first corner probably not because the straight line power of the uh, Triumph 765 should just see him take the lead back there so Paul Holden will uh, get the whole shot in towards the Wilson hairpin so he leads the field round there where we're safely through but Paul Holden is the man who charges his way down towards the Agostini hairpin for the first time and he did win the Silverstone races by some good margins uh, it was fair to say but uh, if Martin Ford can find himself through the 600s he might have a chance of keeping with Paul Holden. Looks like Hedges is still second. 
second and third together, then a slight gap back to fourth, and everyone else is then in that long train as they well away to the bomb headers. One that's gone wide or run straight on it. The first part of the S is through Brundle, so that bike will be allowed to rejoin, although I have to wait for a uh, gap in the traffic, which is a long, long wait, and eventually finds a slight gap towards the rear and gets back into position. There goes Paul Holden through then, leads by 3.5 seconds for that first lap. Jonathan Hedges is there in second. Martin Ford, as we thought, is up there in third place on bike number 95, and it is, yes, as we also predicted, the 90, uh, sorry, the 88 machine, the uh, next of the Moto 46 machines, up into fourth position of Luke Stanley. Then behind that in fifth place is going to be number 24, which comes through, and that's going to be Jamie Wilson, who starts on the outside of the front row, so he's dropped a couple of positions already, and just trying to work out who lost places. Unfortunately, so I'm not too sure who that is, but it's Harrison. We can tell you that much. They all go through the top ten and now on to the fourth lap of the race. Another three seconds added to the race leader's time there. So Paul Holden and now second place for, as we said, Martin Ford. So he's managed to squeeze his way through on Jonathan Hedges on that previous lap. But Jonathan Hedges, it matters not because he still leads the class, which is the, the main thing and important for points to be scored. So as long as he can keep himself ahead of his nearest competitor in cars, Jamie Wilson, he should be okay. The next one onto his tail, uh, although I don't think he'll get there, uh, is Luke Stanley because he's seven seconds down the road. So uh, Jonathan Hedges is looking okay as it stands. Very late on the race, runs through the dust. We are also into the traffic as well, so back markers might just be playing a part in some of these battles which are unfolding, but uh, who did lose out on that previous lap? Well, Sean Evans goes through, Michael Stansfield goes through, does number 160 Robert Goodwin go through? He does, but that was a six seconds slower than what he had previously done, so yeah, it was Robert Goodwin. He went off down at the number 60 machine over at uh, Nelson, but he's recovered. He hasn't lost a place, although he has now been caught by number 33. So Tony Dicey is only 1.8 seconds behind him now, so that's uh, uh, closed up as at the minute, and Paul Holden is definitely proving that as he stands. Don't think he's quite going to break the two-minute barrier in this race as he goes through now to start what's going to be the last lap of the race. He does a one, or he does, 159.748, so he proves me wrong and goes below. A uh, two minute lap time there, and that came from sector one and sector three. It was a very uh, average sector two, but sector ones and sector three were absolutely on fire. Hedges is now in a comfortable with second place. He's about 2.6 seconds up the road from Martin Ford. What's happening for fourth place? Because that was close earlier on. Uh, Jamie Wilson is now ahead of Luke Stanley, so it's the, the newcomers which have got the better of the Moto 46 riders there. So Hedges ahead of Ford, Wilson ahead of Stanley. For sixth place, is it still our pre-injection leader? Number six, yes, it is Sean Winfield, just ahead of, so Sean Evans, ahead of Michael Stansfield there. Those are separated by half a second. So can Evans hold on for one more tour of this three-mile circuit? Paul Holden is not too far away from the checker flag because he is working his way then to the end of this lap. He's on one wheel, he's up towards the line, and Paul Holden is going to take a fifth win out of five races in the Moto 46 Street Bike Cup in the end of uh, 17 and a half seconds between him and the newcomer winner, Jonathan Hedges. Uh, Martin Ford picks up a good result there. For him, that will be a first podium of the year for Martin. So congratulations on a second place, third place overall. And it's for the first time today, uh, the sole class of just the SBS Pro Cup 1000. So they'll be running on track on their own. And we'll see how they get on with our first race of the weekend in just a couple of weeks' time. During the Newcomer 600 Championship, uh, my mate Sam, we decided to set up a team in the Endurance to help me bring on the 600. And it's really good, actually. It really helps over the weekend, because you sort of, you just got time on the bike that when you're in the sprint races, you're, you're concentrating so much on what you're doing. You can't really actually then think, well, how do I need to change something or get a bit better? So in the Endurance, you're naturally doing you know, fast, fast laps, but the back of your mind, you're there for a long time, so you're actually got a bit of time to think. <laughs> the, the, the frog leg chicken dipper. <laughs> so, well, I sort of, I'm so excited and I just don't know what to do, so I just wang on my legs like that. And then try and do a wheelie on the uh, back straight.
So the formation lap gets underway then for the SBS Brakes Cup 1000. The grid lines up as follows. Page 14 in the program is where you can find the entry list for this one. And it's number 35, Brad Mercer, who starts from pole position. His time this morning, 157.993. A good lap, but about two and a half seconds ahead of the rest of the field, which include number 117, which is Paul Barker, and number 70, Doug Johnson. That's how row one lines up. Row two then sees number one, which is Cole Nicholson. Uh, 25, Michael Needham. And 344, four, Andrew Williams. One final bike into position, which has just been told where to go. And as soon as that has happened, we will get and do get the green flag. So we are set ready for SBS Brakes Cup 1000 action here at Snedston. The red lights are about to come on, which they do now. And do we get a clean start from the front? It's fairly even. Bit of a wheelie there from Paul Barker, but it didn't slow him down too much. Further wheelie from Doug Johnson as well as they head up towards the first corner and I think they've all kept pretty much that position apart from Doug Johnson who may have just been passed there by Carl Nicholson so top two as you were Brad Mercer and Paul Barker uh, Doug Johnson with a couple of wheelies up towards Richie but nothing changes out in front for Brad Mercer he leads the way the man who has taken uh, two wheelies so far this year Lipton is doing a good job at the minute he's extending that lead over the rest of the pack and with those in second on backwards squabbling they just uh, allowed Brad Mercer to pull away a little bit further are up the road now, so across the line is about to come. Is he going to set the new quickest lap of the race? And also in the mix is the number 344 machine of Andrew Williams. So he was uh, in contention there for trying to get a place away from either Peter Eccles or Tony Wells. But I think he might have just stole the, the march and got through, did Andrew Williams, on the uh, 344 machine. So it's a bit of a change up front. And have we had the change for the lead? Let's have a look as they come back into my sight. Uh, yes, we have. So Brad Mercer now goes through, gets the job done at the Wilson hairpin. And now will Paul Barker be under pressure from the next bike in line? I think he will, because down the inside of Agostini goes the third place bike to become second. And... That now powers its way on down towards Hamilton. Oh. Now, Brad Mercer will just be happy to be leading and looking for another 25 points to add to his team because behind him, he won't be seeing what's going on. So just under four laps to go. Brad Mercer making his way now down towards Oggy's corner. I'm just wondering if that gap between first and second is coming down as well because last time through... Uh, no, the was slow, wasn't he? And the gap remains at five seconds. And on this one, Brad is still quicker than those behind. So he is not under threat by the looks of it. So that's, that's all good for Brad Mercer. Heads his way down towards Brundle and Nelson. Now we can pick him up on the uh, cameras down there. And then behind the second going through there, Paul Barker and Tony Wells. Fourth and fifth, still pretty much the same gap actually between uh, them compared to second and third. Because they go through now onto the last lap of the race, of Paul Barker going quicker than what uh, Brad Mercer had done. Yes, he does, a 158.569. Brad Mercer had just gone and done the on 158.577, but uh, Paul Barker beats it by eight thousands of a second which is good enough to give him pole position for tomorrow's second race so brilliant out there from uh, Paul Barker so the gap between the two of them didn't change in the, the slightest really because as I said they're both near enough identical lap times on the back straight they are and under the bridge very shortly will go but Brad Mercer looking good can he do the fastest lap and take the win on this last lap he comes towards the line the checker flag is at the ready and Brad Mercer three victories so far this year and his lap time is a 158.6 just misses out there he had a bit of a slow last sector but uh, Paul Barker I'm sure we'll be happy with seconds four guns blazing uh, very shortly we're going to turn our attention to the penultimate race before the lunch break that's going to be for the uh, no Limits Cup 600 and the Pirelli Super Series 600 and we'll take you through all of that uh, in just uh, a few moments time. Hi my name's Sam Throw of uh, Titans Racing competing in the Cup 600 class 2022. Finally starting to click with the bike really enjoying racing it's mental um, never thought I'd be winning a race let alone even the championship um, I think a, a lot of training over winter has helped I've been doing the endurance championship as well finding that's really helping with the sprints um, just with consistency it's not easy I was working hard in that second race and um, 
Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a tough gig in this next one, so we'll see. Yeah, it's been all right. Uh, got P3 in the first race. Um, led a lot of laps, so it's like a happy sad. I'd like to have won it, but that's fine. Uh, I've just had race two, um, and I lost by 0.026. So, yeah, yet again, just missed out, but there's one more race to go, so I think the weekend's going well, so hopefully the weather stays like this, and I'll try winning the next one. It's good to get my first podium, but obviously, because I was leading the race, it would have been better to, to have won it, but I was still happy regardless. I'm gonna chuck the kitchen sink at it. I need it, and try try get 500 spondoolies. <laughs> A bit more cloud cover now, so the temperatures again drop. That will have an effect on the track conditions for the riders. But uh, they've all done uh, enough weaving to try and build some tyre temperature as best they possibly can. And now the front row is being formed as they all come back into position. The bright blue colours on pole of Max Ingham on the Kawasaki. Alongside him, the white machine, James Alderson, the Triumph. And then the Kawasaki on the outside of Finyasco, which is the uh, green machine that sits there alongside the two who outdid him in qualifying this morning, but we are almost good to go. We're going to wait for the green flag from the back of the grid, which we now get, so it gives the indication to the front we can get ready for the start. So the red lights again are about to come on. Ten laps of racing then for the No Limits Cup and Pirelli Super Series. Away they go. Bit of a, a wayward start there from Finney Arsenal. Great start from, I think that was James Alderson, who's got a, a good run of speed down towards the first corner. And those from behind will need even more speed to try and cut their way through into the first turn which they do and everyone is just about through there yet we'll find the the funnel to get through and now head up towards the right hand of the Wilson hairpin let's see who emerges in the, the lead it was a good start from Max Ingham and also from James Alderson it was Finley who as I said was a bit wayward heading towards the pit wall there but he's managed to I think recover somewhere inside the top five but player are whereabouts I'm not too sure as they all turn their way through Palmer from the Arscott and uh, possibly Lee Wells will all close up onto the top three. So it's going to be another shuffle championship before we head to the next round at Donington. The speed builds all the way around the outside there for uh, what looks to be the James Alderson machine because Finley's got up to second. James looks to the inside in towards Murray's. Keep it clean, guys, which I think they just about do. Squeeze their way through. Up on the curbs they go and then power their way towards the line where Max Bingham will lead lap number one of this race. Side by side for second. It's just going to go the way of uh, Finley Arscott, I think, as they head up towards the first corner, which it does. So Finley all tries to squeeze through, but he can't quite do it because holding them off on the outside, in fact, he's Tom Fisher, so it's not it's going to be James Alderson, it's Tom Fisher. He's moved to second uh, from the second row of the grid. So number 45 is up there. Uh, fourth place then for number 10 across the line. That's Andy Smart. Uh, Dean Bednarek next in fifth. Sixth place for Sam Throw. Seventh place for number 24. Someone who has turned things around is the new race leader because I think we've now got Broderick Whitmore Wilson uh, to the head of the field. The Oliver Farr, isn't it? He's dropped uh, a couple of places from where he started. Uh, Tommy Fielding is in eighth place. And James Alderson is now down to ninth position. So he had a bit of a uh, bad first lap as well. So uh, he's in that little battle that we said about as uh, almost side by side, which is with for the lead. But Max Ingham is going to hold on to it as they turn in towards Richie for the third time. So Ingham, R. Scott and Fisher separated by, get this across the line, less than two tenths of a second. Actually, just lost the lead, hasn't he, Max Ingham? Because the blue bike is not in the lead anymore. I think it's going to be Tom Fisher who squeezed his way through. It's been a bad lap already for Max Ingham. The man who qualified in pole position, led the first lap, led just about the second lap, but now finds himself down there in third place in the top two. But he hasn't gone through to take the place away, so it's still Fisher is second, although he now retaliates on the outside line. He gets a bit of a, a side draft as they cross the line. And Max Ingham down the toe. But James Alderson will take something away from this race so far. He's recovered, and he is the quickest man on circuit with the new quickest lap of 
56.485, so a second quicker, and we are very sure that he's the start the last lap of the race. Four as one, as we're about to start the last lap of the race. So that flag is now being thrown out, yellow with the black cross on it, and Max Ingham is potentially trialling what he could do on the last lap, because he dragged up alongside Billy Arscott, and he would have won the race if that would have been the last lap of the race in second by the time they left Mallory. So it's all about the drag from the final corner to the line. This is going to be an eventful last lap of the race. Down the back straight they go then. Who's going to be leading by the time they get to Brundle and Nelson? Onto the straight, it's uh, Finley Arscott that leads. Max Ingham gets a good turn of speed as they turn their way now through Corum for the final time. Let's see how this is all going to unfold. They come but towards the line. It's the checker flag out of the ready and the Pirelli Super Series 600 is going to be won in race one by... Hold your breath, it's going to be close, but it's going to go the way of, by the looks of it, is that Tom Fisher who gets the job done? They come through, wait for the time screen to update. No, it's James Alderson. So James Alderson does take the win ahead of Max Ingham. He tried exactly what he did a lap ago to draw alongside, but he missed out by 67 thousandths of a second. So James Alderson takes the win. That's going to be his second of the season. And with that, that means he'll extend the championship lead as well. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Hopefully you did as well. That was a really, really good fight out front between uh, James Alderson, Max Singham and Finley Arscott and Tom Fisher, the man who missed out on the podium places. Quickest lap of the race went the way of James Alderson, a 156.356. Uh, one more race to come. going to be for the Metzler Newcomer 1000s and Ducati Coventry JHP Challenge. Uh, those bikes will be with us very very soon and we'll have the grid view in just uh, a couple of moments here we go then our final race about to head off on to uh, a green flag lap here at Snetterton this is the Metzler the Newcomer 1000s along with the Ducati Coventry JHP Challenge we said Jordan Browse the man who starts on par I think this is the first time we saw uh, seen Jordan this year I think he was with us at Silverstone so comes to join us here at Snetterton on that BMW that we've got all in place ready to go I think every place apart from a couple is filled on the grid so we can get ready for eight laps of racing for the final time and we're going to get going when the red lights go off which they do now and a good start from row two there uh, Reese Young the championship leader finds his way up into second place straight away and can he get to the lead before Richie he's going to be close but no not quite there as the uh, closest to Jordan Browse who swung across and kept the position kept the line and takes the field up towards Wilson for the first time. But a very, very slow start from both Paul Gallington and Stephen Duncan. But it was the uh, hot shot off the second row, Rich Young, who got the job done up into second place. And now can he put all that pressure on the pole sitter as they head now around the Snetterton 300 circuit. Back to the order, yet yeah, Jordan Brown, uh, Jordan Browse leads by a good, comfortable margin over number 78, which is Stephen Duncan. Third place for number 41, Paul Gallington, so the front row as you were. Fourth place then for number 26, which is Mark Little. Fifth place, number 83, at the end of the first lap is going to be Simon Adams. And then behind that, sixth place, number 224, Lee Healy. Seventh place, number 85, is Paul Michel. Uh, eighth place, number 45, is going to be Andy Ashcroft, so he stays where he started. Uh, ninth place for number 321, James Lee. He's come from 20th on the grid. That is an incredible start there from uh, James Lee. And to the top 10, is number 24. Jordan Browse goes through, completes another lap. He now leads by let's go to his, uh, extended margin. We're out to 6.9 seconds, but it's side by side. Paul Gallington is having a good little scrap there with Mark Little, who tried to go through, and he may have just achieved it as they turned their way in towards Richie's corner. Uh, Paul Gallington runs within the uh, Ducati Challenge, and. Uh, Mark Little runs within the, the newcomer's class, but still it's an experience for Mark Little to run against uh, Paul Gallington. And Paul Gallington, by the way, does lead the Ducati class by uh, a fair margin once again. But they get out front and then change two marks, 7.4 seconds on this occasion. And we do unfortunately have a fuller. Uh, it's either Bomhole or Corum. I think that might be more Corum than Bomhole. Nonetheless, Jordan Brown still continues to lead. Two laps now to go, just under, as we are working our way through the first sector. Browse just completing that. Still second place in the minute for Stephen Duncan. Right on his tail is Paul Gallington as they head down in towards the left-hander at Agostini. They're on the exit now and you can tell how close they are because there is probably just a bike that you could squeeze between them. As 
Jordan Browse heads through to start his last lap of the race. So one to go across the line up towards Richie's corner to the turn one, two, three. So drop for about eight tenths of a second there. So the gap still remains very comfortable. Six and a half seconds between him and Stephen Duncan. Duncan about half a second in hand over Paul Gallington, who still remains with the quickest lap of the race at 159.982. Meantime, Jordan Browse is on his way to the chequered flag for the first time this year in first place. The 112 machine is up towards the line and Jordan Browse will take the win in the Metzler Newcomer 1000 here at Sneston. Second place, who is it going to be? It's Stephen Duncan who takes it in. So first and second for newcomers. Uh, third for the first of the Ducati's home, which is Paul Gallington. So he keeps up his uh, fine record of uh, quite a few wins now. Four out of five wins for Paul Gallington. But that does bring the curtain down on another No Limits weekend here at Snetterton, which again has been thoroughly enjoyable. We've had some really, really good racing. We've had some uh, close finishes on most occasions and we've got through the day without hardly any red flags. We've just had the one uh, to deal with, but apart from that, it's been some really, really good racing. So as ever, thank you so much to our uh, lovely uh, Orange Army, the marshals to do a fantastic job. Without them, we would not be able to go racing. So thank you. Uh, have a safe journey home. Whatever you're up to for the rest of the weekend, enjoy it. From Snetterton, No Limits, and myself, Matt Sucklin, uh, we wish you enjoyable rest of the weekend and look forward to welcoming you back at Snetterton in the near future. Bye for now.